lovelies, it's Ebony and I'm back with another video for you. This time I'm going to be talking about my natural hair journey. Now I know that I have a video posted like way in the back, back, back of my channel, <laughs> like in the early, early days. I felt like I wanted to kind of update you all on some of the things I really didn't talk about in that video. And plus the background music is like way too loud in that video. I'm so embarrassed. Those were early in my editing days, so please forgive me. And plus I saw Alyssa Forever's video. Um, I guess it's a sponsored video by OGX for their hashtag hair truths video. And she's talking about her natural hair journey. And that just got me inspired to, you know, talk about that and share what's some of my new subscribers who maybe didn't see that very old video and do me a favor don't watch that old video <laughs> yeah so just give them an idea of what I was dealing with early in the early early days of my natural hair journey and you know how I got to where I am now so if you want to know everything about my natural hair journey then keep on watching now just to warn you guys I'm in the bathroom like I usually am but it's like a partly cloudy mostly cloudy day I don't know so the sun keeps going in and out so just bear with me but right now I'm loving this golden look right here so hopefully it stays like this but just to give you some background on my hair for the most part my hair has been pretty long but ever since I've gone natural my hair has gotten to lengths that I never thought it would get when I was a child my hair was probably about mid back and now my hair is almost to my tailbone. I see a lot of comments in a lot of my video sections saying, you know, she's always had long hair. Why are you all listening to her? It's genetics, it's DNA, yada, yada, yada. And while some of that definitely is true, you know, your hair has a whole heck of a lot to do with your genetic makeup, what you do to your hair once it grows and once it's here, that can change the whole thing altogether. Because let me tell you, when I had a relaxer, my hair broke off in ways that I didn't even know. My hair was still long, so I didn't think that anything was going Going on but it wasn't until I became natural that my hair really took off as far as the growth and the retaining of the growth yeah so the first picture I'm going to show you is from like my 11th grade year in high school that was when I felt like I was really feeling myself with my hair I had just gotten relaxer a couple of years ago before that I had been begging my parents for years to let me have a relaxer. My dad will always tell me no. He's like, you look too grown. You don't need long straight hair. You're fine with your ponytail. Get out my face. <laughs> so I just fought and fought and fought. And finally, when high school came about, my dad was like, okay, fine, you're old enough. And when I was 14, I got a relaxer. And after that, it just, you couldn't tell me nothing. My hair was long, it was straight. And it was probably about here, you know, and my hair was just, I felt super long. Anytime anyone talked about me or wanted to describe what I looked like, they were like, Ebony, the one with the long hair, all the time. That's who, that's who I was. And when I became older, started flat ironing my hair more, curling it more, it still, to me, didn't look unhealthy, but looking back at those pictures, I'm just like, what was I thinking? My hair is so thin. But I thought I was hot, you know? I liked it. I was, it's, you know, experimenting different styles in my hair. I loved it, you know? So, of course, as I went through high school, school uh, finished high school went to college I continued with the relaxers the only thing I probably did differently that most people didn't do is I only got relaxers twice maybe three times a year the hair dresser that I used to go to she used to always say your hair is too fine you don't need a lot of um, relaxers like every six weeks I knew people that were getting relaxers every six weeks and she was like you don't need relaxers to that degree, your hair is gonna fall out. And I couldn't really argue with that because I didn't want the alternative, or, which would be breakage or my hair falling out, like she said. I was just like, okay, fine, whatever. And, um, but even still, with just getting a relaxer two to three times a year, my hair just was not at its healthiest. So it wasn't until I went to the hairdresser right after I graduated college and the girl was like, you know, I've been watching these news specials on what relaxers do to your body over time. It's not good, you have to be careful. And I really have been, I've been recommending to all my clients, you know, consider going natural. I know it's a lot and, you know, just, but, you know, just try it. And I was just like, girl, I'm not going natural. That's too much hair. I knew exactly what my hair was like. Um, because I had begged my parents to get me out of that situation and I just felt like it would be too much trouble. Of course, what she said stayed with me and I just kind of looked into it. I started asking people had they considered going natural and what their thoughts and ideas were on the matter and eventually I was just like, fine. I don't feel like paying for a relaxer anymore anyway and I hate going to the hair salon. Even though I go a few times a year, I still was just like, if I don't have to go at all, <laughs> then I'm with that. So. And you know, worst from the worst, I don't like it and I put another relaxer in my hair. So I kind of made a deal with myself to at least try it. 
So once I decided to try it, I stopped getting a relaxer. I was in the transition stages, but you couldn't tell because I was still flat ironing my hair. You could not tell the difference. There was a lot of demarcation as far as anyone could tell. I wasn't doing a lot of twist outs and braid outs or anything like that. I just felt like, hey, this is a lot easier than I thought <laughs> because my hair was still doing what it would normally do. I was still flat ironing, flat ironing it and treating it as if I still had a relaxer, which I found out later was a huge, huge mistake. So time goes on and I'm starting to, you know, educate myself through YouTube videos and uh, natural hair blogs that were popping up here and there. So I decided I would try a braid out. The first products that I bought were Mixed Chicks. I had watched their YouTube videos over and over again. I love those two sisters. I thought they were so pretty. I love their personalities, their looks. I was like, I can't wait to have natural hair now. I want to look just like that. I loved how curly their hair was and I also loved just how confident they were. So I went to my local beauty supply store, got me a couple sample sizes and did my first braid out and it looked like crap. <laughs> I had so much straight hair still and I was just not educated in this world still and honestly had I been 100% truthful with myself, I didn't even need to buy mixed chicks to fail that badly. But like I said, back then when I was doing it, I didn't think it looked that bad. I was wearing it out. My hair, I thought looked great, you know, but looking at pictures now, I just can't even believe I left the house looking that crazy. <laughs> so the turning point as far as not putting any heat in my hair and really embracing, truly embracing my natural hair was when I was washing my hair one day. I washed my hair in the kitchen sink. I flipped my hair over just like I would normally do. And when I flipped my hair back up to, you know, the tangled condition and all that, a big knot sat right on top of my head. I couldn't move it. All the hair was just sitting up on top of my hair. Even the hair in the back, it was just sitting there. Like I had a rubber band in it and it was this huge, huge knot. I got so scared and so panicked. I was just like, oh my God, this is gonna be like one of those stories where I had to go to the hairdresser and cut all my hair off. Cause mind you, I didn't want to do a big chop. I didn't feel like it suited me as far as my look and I was just too afraid to have hair that short. So I was just like, no, not today. I'm not cutting all my hair off. So I took a bunch of herbal essences, Hello Hydration and squeeze the life out of that bottle into my head so that I could detangle as much as I could. I lost so much hair that day. Like I feel like the shed hair ball was like this big. But once that knot was out, I was just thankful and I, I was just like, thank God that's over with and I'm gonna do something. I gotta make a change. Like I, it was a wake up call for me because I didn't wanna lose my hair. And luckily I, I didn't really notice the amount of hair you know, the amount of shed hair that I lost, luckily it wasn't noticeable. So I didn't want to roll the dice with that again and continue to damage and break off my hair. So after that, I decided I'm going to get my hair cut. Um, my friend, she had gotten a cute little bob. It was to her shoulders. I said, I can pull that off. I can do that. No problem. That's probably how much uh, natural hair has grown out anyways. I think it's at least to my shoulder. And so I went and got my hair cut. So the guy who cut my hair, he cut off much more than what I intended for him to cut, but it was okay because it came out super cute and I loved it. My hair felt so light and so healthy. Oh my gosh, it felt so, so good to have all that dead hair cut off my um, cut off of my head because it was falling off into the sink. It was shedding and broken pieces. Oh my God, it was just, it was just too much. So I was happy with that. I was still flat ironing it. But I felt like, hey, at least it's all natural and there's no relaxer in it, so maybe the consequences won't be as severe down the road. So I let my hair grow out, continue to grow out, and once I decided I wanted to do a wash and go, I knew that I needed to cut off some of the straight pieces in the front because I did have an angled bob. So in this very bathroom, I cut my hair, some of the straight pieces that were still lingering up front, I cut those pieces off, and I'm looking at my hair in the mirror, I'm like, Yes, I can finally do a wash and go. I'm gonna look like all those people I saw on YouTube and in the vlogs. My hair's gonna look so cute. Wrong. <laughs> my hair had no curl pattern at all because I kept flat ironing it. I didn't realize that I was doing a lot of damage to my hair or I didn't realize I was doing as much damage as I was doing to my hair. I thought my hair was gonna immediately go back to the way it was when I was a child and it was just gonna be wavy and curly and curls popping everywhere but there were straight pieces, there were curly pieces, but still not really curly, and it just looked a hot mess. So I was like, okay, 
my hair is too short to just wear like this. Like I can't put it in a ponytail and hide it. I gotta style it somehow. But that was when I fell in love temporarily with Flexi Rise. Um, that went on for a few months. After a while, it started to get pretty tiresome as far as putting them in, sitting under a dryer, yada, yada, yada. But at least it gave me uniformity and I was able to go to work, go to events and just be amongst people and not feel so self-conscious about my hair. So once I got tired of flexi rise, my hair was still pretty short. I decided that I would actually wear my hair like this. It's ironic that I'm wearing my hair like this right now, but much shorter. So I would put two twists in my hair um, after washing it, detangling, conditioning, leaving conditioner, product, all that good stuff. I would put oils in it, everything that I felt was gonna moisturize my hair and I would just tuck it under like this and pin it and that's how I would wear it to work. And it wasn't the best look for me, I would say. I mean, it was the most decent and like, I felt most comfortable with that because I still wasn't comfortable wearing my hair out. But once my hair started to grow a little bit longer, I got more comfortable wearing the twist out from that style. I thought like, finally my hair is starting to look like something. My hair was growing slowly but surely. And I will tell you, when your hair gets about here, it's difficult, at least in my experience, maybe I'm just impatient, but I really felt like it was, it took a little bit longer to grow just because your hair is touching, you know, your clothes and it's drying out the hair. Keep It's harder for it to keep the moisture and to, to grow. So it was just a really trying stage that I was in and I was just like, just keep pushing, Ebony, just keep pushing, just keep your focus on the light at the end of the tunnel. It's gonna work out. You're gonna be so happy and pleased that you stuck with this. So once I finally got the hang of my Denman brush and putting in enough product in my hair for it to actually hold a curl, I learned to diffuse. I, be I became so much more comfortable with my hair. Your natural hair journey is something that is more than just you know, your physical appearance. I literally had to learn to love myself without my hair. Like I said earlier in this video, I was always known as Ebony with the long hair all the time. So that was part of my identity, whether I knew it or not. So having to learn how to really love myself without like my biggest and most, most significant physical characteristic, I guess you could say, it was a little bit difficult. Um, and not to mention, you know, you do have the comments of people asking you, why, what are you doing with your hair? Why don't you have a relaxer? Well, maybe it's not getting a relaxer. Don't, you don't want to, you should get a relaxer. You know, like that type of stuff just, I had to not let it eat at me. And it's funny because I never dwelled on that. If you've ever been bullied, then you know that feeling that it stays with you and you kind of carry it. I never did that because I always felt like this is temporary. What you're seeing now is just part of the process. This is not gonna be permanent. My hair is gonna grow, and then you're gonna be asking me what did I do to get my hair to grow? So I always focused on that. Um, I didn't really have anybody alongside me to tell me, you know, keep going, Ebony, just keep fighting. <laughs> keep, you know, keep at it. Don't and ignore what everyone else says. I never had anybody that really did that because when I went natural, natural hair was just, you know, it was on the come up, so it wasn't a whole lot of people doing it with me. But if you are finding that, you're struggling, find someone that can help you. Find someone that you can do this with because had I had someone to tell me, you know, keep pushing, don't straighten your hair, your hair looks fine, maybe I wouldn't have straightened my hair so much. Maybe I wouldn't have had such a overwhelming sense of, oh my God, what have I done with my hair when I first thought that I could wear a wash and go. It's better to do it with someone who you who can encourage you and keep your mind on the right path and keep you positive. And also keep in mind that while you may want longer hair, enjoy the short stage because I find myself so often saying to myself, I really want to cut my hair because this is a lot of hair. It's a lot of work. I have to summon a lot of energy <laughs> and motivation sometimes when it's time to do my hair, more often than not actually. So short hair definitely has its appeal while long hair has its appeal as well. But I feel like every stage is give and take. Every time you're in a stage, you want to go back to another or get to another stage. And once you get there, you kind of want to reach back and revisit the stage that you just left. So for those of you who are struggling, I hope you take away from this video that this is just temporary. You know, not liking what you see, not getting the results that you want or having trouble finding the products that work best for you. It's all temporary. 
and we're all still learning. I may seem like I have it figured out, but I'm still learning all the time. And that's what I love about doing YouTube videos. It forces me to move outside of my comfort zone and really try some new things and learn things about my hair that, you know, I probably wouldn't have learned otherwise because I would have been stuck inside of a pattern or routine. So I hope this video helped you all out. I hope that you are enjoying your natural hair journey and I hope that I'm helping you somehow, some way. And if those things are true, go ahead and like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And as always, thanks for watching.